Hi everybody, so the goal of this presentation is to learn how international trade and universal basic income are related. So, uh, economists generally believe that trade is beneficial, the main reason being comparative advantage. So certain countries and certain areas within a country are more well suited to produce certain goods. The common way that this is explained is through a production possibilities frontier. So let's say you have two goods in an economy. You have Mian Bao and you have Shui. So you only have two goods in this economy. Clearly, if we put all of our resources into producing bread, we would have no resources to produce water. So that's what a production's possibility frontier is showing, is that there's opportunity cost to what you're making. So it's better for an area that's really good at making bread to make bread, because when you have an open market, this production's possibility frontier expands, meaning that you can have more of both goods, which is an increase in efficiency. So that's why comparative advantage is a good thing. 82% of economists agree that international trade is good based on surveys globally. But generally, if you have markets where I can buy products from Taiwan and Taiwanese can buy products from the United States, the cost of those products is going to be lower because there's technology exchange between countries. Um, the biggest drawback is that it doesn't necessarily help everyone. There are certain losers to trade, just as there's winners. In a lot of cases, factory workers are the most vulnerable because things like textiles, like jeans, for example, can be produced best in places with very, very cheap labor. So in a lot of ways, comparative advantage is not just about which areas have the best resources, but also what their labor market is like. So Young showed that uh, low-skilled workers were most likely to lose their jobs when trade increased, and high-skilled workers were most likely to keep their jobs. But, in a sense, this could actually be beneficial for us in the political changes that it creates in a country. So Kim, in his study, showed that when people were losing jobs due to trade in Korea, in Taiwan, and other countries in the Asia Pacific, they actually increased their support for social protection measures, generally defined. So what's the best thing to do for people that are inevitably going to lose jobs? A lot of these workers are not doing tasks that a robot can't do. And since it's expensive to pay a lot of people, they're probably the first that are going to be replaced. While sometimes they're able to go on strike to improve their workplace conditions and wages, that actually accelerates movements toward automation because employers don't want to have to deal with unions. Unions are expensive, they get them in trouble. So when workers actually fight back for higher wages and more benefits, that only makes businesses dislike them more. Also, if you raise the minimum wage, we've seen a lot of studies in which raising the minimum wage, although it may benefit workers for a small time, actually increases automation even more. Because again, if you increase labor costs, businesses are going to turn toward a lower cost alternative, robots and automation. So this is how it relates back to Taiwan. So Taiwan in December of 2015 passed what they call trade adjustment assistance. This is a policy that reimburses workers that lose their jobs because of trade. Um, this includes industrial and service industries too. The problem is there wasn't actually a lot of money put into it. While this might help people that are displaced due to trade, it's not going to be available to people that lost their jobs due to domestic automation. These types of programs are similar to UBI for two reasons. First is it's a cash transfer. So even though it doesn't go to everybody and it's not universal, they do just straight up transfer the cash to you, which makes it similar to a UBI. And it's also in response to work. Trade adjustments assistance is actually really, really ineffective though. In other countries, especially the United States, they combine a lot of conditionality to it. So in order to get trade adjustment assistance in the United States, you have to find a job within 26 weeks, which isn't a whole lot of time, and they only give you wage insurance, which means that you get 50% of the wage that you were making before. 
So it's trying to soften the impact of losing your job. The problem is, is that it compared to people who don't get trade assistance, the people who do are not any better off finding a job. So apparently the money that we are giving them does not actually help them find work because they might just have skills that cannot actually get them any type of job. They would have to go back to school for longer than 26 weeks. As part of the U.S. trade assistance too, they give job training and nearly every job training program is really bad when it's administered by the government. So the Labor Department has to do that because it's by law to offer training. But the government doesn't know what training employers want. So one of the complaints that we might get when we talk about automation is they'll say the government should just have retraining programs for workers. The problem is, is those suck really bad. They don't train workers for the jobs that are available. And we should be careful with our assumption that giving people money means that they're going to be able to find a job. They might not be able to. That's actually a big reason why we want a UBI. Someday, when those things are automated, people won't be able to find a job. That's just going to be the reality. Which is why I think that in the long run, we're going to have to frame this as an alternative to employment for some and a way to support their family while they find a new job for others. So, what are the most important conclusions from what I've just said? First is that trade adjustment assistance fails. There's no major effect on employment. This study actually measured Korea, so it's, it's very similar to Taiwan. Thus, we should probably be in the business of helping people before they lose their job. And so if anything, we should give more labor power to people now so that when they lose their job, they're not just falling straight to the ground when they lose it, they can actually be taught a little bit before. I think this also demonstrates how UBI can solve a lot of the problems we see with trade adjustment assistance. For example, not everyone gets trade assistance. You have to apply for it. There's also a lot of bureaucracy with trade assistance because when the government tries to do training, they, they try to measure how you're doing. And those bureaucrats don't really have an incentive to do their job well. It also means that we can align ourselves with 82% of economists that support free trade. If our goal was to expand free trade or to get farther on this production possibilities curve so we can have more bread and more water, then we've now gotten rid of the biggest disadvantage, which was losing jobs for certain workers. So this makes it more likely that there would be political support for some free trade. And I think that's why people that love workers and people that love business can both get behind uh, UBI.